Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Board of Health meeting. It's a virtual meeting on Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. My name is Thomas Corey, Dr. Stephen Gagliardi, Stephanie Perry, member of the board, will not be with us today, and Tess Curran, the agent for the board. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. The first item of business on the agenda is the approval of the min minutes of the meeting from February. Um, I'm just gonna do a, a roll call for the starting of, of starting of the meeting. Okay. So we'll do a uh, roll call. Tom Corey. Present. Stephen Gagliardi. Present. Stephanie Perry. Okay. <laughs> the floor is okay. yours again, Tom. Okay. <laughs> We have the approval of the minutes from the meeting of February 26th and November 5th, 2020. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to be made to the minutes of the meeting as printed? No. Okay, hearing none, we have to have a motion and a second to adopt the meeting, adopt the minutes. Do we have a motion? Motion to accept. I'll second. Roll call. Tom Corey. Yes. Stephen Gagliardi. Yes. Okay. Stephanie the... Perry. <laughs> Next, we have a proposal, review of proposed keeping of animals. It was distributed uh, to the members of the board for, for perusal and review. Um, I just have a couple of questions. There's a couple of spare spelling errors, but that's not the, on number five, <laughs> Permit and application requirements. Section A, the first line. A permit is required for anyone keeping one or more animals. What's the difference between anyone and everyone? I thought everyone would be more. Okay, we can update that. Okay. Yeah. This template, that, that was just used for, you know, I don't, I can look at, I can ask corporation counsel to, if well, there's kind of a legal, a legal different, dif difference okay. between anyone and everyone. Um, okay. This, most of this template, including that anyone language was provided in that templated document from MAHB, but mm -hmm. I can certainly find out from corporation counsel if we can change anyone to everyone. Okay, that, that was one of my questions. And then um, on uh, this would be page seven, top of the page, uh, paragraph I is an Isaac. Um, if the permit holder is not the owner of the property, documentation must be provided indicating that the property owner, it says, is not opposed. Um, I thought is aware. What section is that, Tom? This is page, the top of page seven. Paragraph I is in Isaac. It's the last line in the first, well, in section I. Someone okay. could be aware and opposed. So that would mean that, okay, I, he's aware, well, I told I, him. He doesn't agree with it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And that would satisfy I. So if you have to say someone's not opposed. Well, the regulation indicates that the owners of the property must be aware and not objecting. So is that in another section? Sorry, when I open this, it's coming up through as bullets. So I'm just trying to okay. find. <laughs> There's a line that says that the uh, the owner has to give his permission. Um, is that under the, is that under the permit and application requirement section? That's uh, yes. Okay. 
I apologize. Can you hear me? We can yes, hear you, good Kathy. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, because in section E, it says name, mailing address, number, phone number, and email of all owners of the property. So I would assume there they are aware and not opposed. Um, well, the person doing the application could just list the name, address, and phone number. It doesn't mean they're aware or agree. Well, you have to have well, that, that that, says, th that's true for, the, for that, uh, that part of the, of the discussion. But I mean, you're the landlord and, and you show up on Thursday afternoon and everything's fine. And you show up the following Thursday afternoon and there's a chicken coop with 12 chickens and um, the permit's already been issued, but it was never discussed. Your, your tenants did that without. So I, I think we have to assume that the landlord must be aware. I thought, I thought that there was, there was uh, I to, I'm just trying to search for it. I, I had remembered that there was an indication about landlords. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not seeing it here. So you, Tom, are you, are you? Well, I just want to clarify the language. Maybe if it's a, uh, a tenant going to put the chickens or the horses or the goats in, we should have something from the physical landlord owner sure. as, as aware and not opposed. Yeah. Okay. Because that'll be a friction between them and not necessarily between the board and the applicant. Yeah, so aware and not opposed or agreeable, whatever language they want to use. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. We can add that in. Okay. And then under hearings, um, section B, the um, notice of public hearings, blah, 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 by first class mail and by legal notice in a local newspaper of general circulation by the floor of a board of health. That's what I thought the past procedure was. And if you go down to the last sentence in a sworn statement that the applicant has mailed notice to each of butter by first class mail. Okay. Um, we can I can just remove, I'll remove that line. Well, well just that um, I just happened to, in, in where I live, I, there were, I, I counted 21 of butters within the 300 feet. And so how do we know that he knows the, uh, the applicant with no name, address, phone number, all this stuff. And maybe the fee, the application fee isn't high enough if there's a situation where they have to send 15 or more certified letters at $5 a piece. Um, it would become burdensome to the city in some mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Because I, I know it said $50 for an application, $25 for a permit. But I don't think we'd be covering costs because isn't the present animal fee $100 a year? You know, I don't actually know that, that fee. I, I don't I'm know quite, the fees. I'm quite yeah. confident. I think that's a hundred dollars a year and it's renewable every year. So if it was only fifty dollars and the city's gonna do all the work, and again, like I said, in my personal situation, I can count 21 of butters within the 300 feet because of where my house is particularly located. And if there has okay. to be if there has to be 15 or more certified letters at five dollars a piece and go to the post office and get them all written up, I don't mm -hmm. think the application fee would be. Are sufficient enough to cover the costs. Okay. I don't see this as a profit-making opportunity for the city. I just see it, but we have to cover the costs. I yeah, that that certainly is understandable and makes sense. So so um, this this I just had it as the a permitting fee, not an application and a permit fee. Um, but we can do an application fee and then the permit. Permitting okay, because there, there was a, a, a fee mentioned of 25. Yes, I think I put, and I kind of had pulled from some other, um, mm -hmm. I looked at other towns okay. and communities no, that, to determine fine. like kind of what the average uh, 
permitting structure as well as the fining structure. Mm -hmm. um, so, in, in several other communities had a permit fee of $50 for the initial permit and then a $25 for like any renewal permits. Mm -hmm. um, And I think that's all I had. The rest of it looks fine. Okay. Maybe maybe the application fee you could have, you know, charge per notification. It's for you know five dollars per, plus you know whatever else you need. But have the the permit fee. But then you know if I was going to do it, I don't have in three hundred feet. I don't have many people. Mm -hmm. So then you're charging a lot. And I think, you know, a lot of people who are going to get chickens aren't going to have a lot of neighbors. Um, it, to my recollection, most of the, the permits or the variances we've granted in the past, they all, yeah. that's why they were there for the variance. Yeah. So maybe charge, you know, per certified letter. However many, if you know, if you need 20, then you got to pay hundred bucks plus an application fee and then the permit fee is separate. But then on your renewal, you wouldn't need to notify everybody again, right? No, it's just the first time through. So that would be the initial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, then you can have it so that someone who well, has just a few neighbors. If you have six chickens, all right, that would be $30. That really wouldn't cover the 50 because it's not only sending of the fee. It's someone's got to go to the post office. Someone's got to write yeah. the letters, things like that. But if you only had one goat, it can't be five dollars for one goat. No, I'm talking about you have your permit fee is fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Then you have an application fee, which would be the twenty-five for the person having to go in the post office, plus five dollars per certified letter. So if exactly. you need a hundred, if you need twenty certified letters, you got to pay for that, mm -hmm. plus application fee and then the permit fee. Is that something we can check with Corporation Council on? I'll have to check on if we can do it per, you know, if, if we have a set and then over a certain amount would be, mm -hmm. you know, or we Yeah, maybe you get a certain number of letters sent for the 25. But you're right, you got to cover the cost of someone actually having to go do all that, which would be the $25, and then the cost of the postage. And if it's certified and whatever that is, how many letters need to be sent? So that way the city is never, never behind on that one. Again, I, I don't see this as a, in any way as a profit situation for the city, but just no. we have to, we have to be uh, cognizant of covering costs. Yeah. And that would I'll cover the with, cost. And... I'll, I'll check with corporation council on um, the structure that can be used for an application and a, and a fee to make sure that we're covering our, our baseline cost of expense um, okay. and whether or not we can do that per, um, you know, certified letter beyond a certain point. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing I just wanted to, we hadn't discussed this um, from my review of our previous meeting, but the um, under permit and application requirements, uh, it's a bullet, the third bullet on mine, possibly C for you. Um, the keeping of less than you know, blank um, chickens shall not require a permit. I don't believe we had, or the board had discussed that. Um, is, you know, is that something that you, you would consider? Or I think kind of based on our conversation last time with Faust and um, Lisa Golden from Inspectional Services, we were kind of thinking to make sure that it's an even playing field that all individuals who are keeping chickens would be required to have a permit so that we could ensure that pest control and um, cleanliness is is um, kept um, as you know would meet our yes. requirements. Yeah. So I think so. We'll, we'll, we can remove that, and anybody yes. who has any chickens would would be yes. required to have a permit. Oh, okay. Just wanted to confirm. Is there anything that says a chicken, one chicken, could be a pet? No, like based on kind of the descript descriptions of, you know, in the the language, it, any chicken would be considered a a non-pet. A non-pet. Right. Cuz some people have pot-bellied pigs as, as pets. 
They're supposed to be good pets. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> okay, anything right. else on the animal regulations? So we'll, we'll send that to Corporation Council for review. Yeah, so how about, I think I can edit this again, discuss this with Corporation Council, then we can have another meeting to discuss the amend possible updates, and then after that have a, have a look for a public hearing in the future. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? That sounds perfect. Okay. Sounds good. Do we need a roll call for that? Sure, why not? Just okay, we, we, we need a motion to uh, further this along to Corporation Council for updates and consultation with Corporation Council. Motion to pass it on. Second, roll call. Tom Corey. Yes. Stephen Gagliardi. Yes. Stephanie Perry. Okay, the motion carries. Next item on the agenda, we have an open meeting law complaint from Patrick Higgins, uh, alleged violation of the Board of Health meeting on November 5th. We need a motion to refer this to Corporation Council. Motion to refer. Second. All in favor say no. Roll call. Roll call. Yes. <laughs> yes. Stephen Gagliardi. Yes. Stephanie Perry. Okay, motion passes. Stephanie Under new business, is there any new business of such a nature that it could not uh, make the uh, the agenda? Uh, no, not at this time. I just will give you an update. Um, our public health nurse just texted me uh, that our confirmed case counts um, as of today at 4.10 p.m. Um, are 5,257 confirmed cases of COVID. Um, we um, sadly have had additional two additional fatalities um, since yesterday for a total of 172 um, COVID uh, associated deaths um, for Fall River residents. Um, so uh, we continue to work with um, the CTC for contact tracing um, and continue to encourage residents to um, follow the DPH guidance in terms of wearing a mask, maintaining their distance, staying home as much as possible. Um, and, you know, also about um, adhering to the stay at home and um, which were, which encourages residents um, throughout Massachusetts to stay home between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. unless they are traveling um, for work purposes. So. Um, okay, anything else on that? Any other questions? No. Yes, I think we lost you. And the Inspectional well, Services are. Division is um, continuing to uh, uh, go out based on uh, cases um, that we need to, you know, work with establishments on, um, and also um, on any complaints that are coming from constituents regarding um, a lack of compliance for businesses or organizations. Okay. Is there anything? Did, did you see the um, the the story on the guy in Staten Island who was arrested and fined because he they outlawed. Um, or restricted indoor dining on half of Staten Island. And he protested. He allowed indoor dining and gave free food and drink in return for donations uh, rather than charging. But then he was arrested and fined like $1,000 a day. Um, what would What would be the process if if that happened around here, would that involve us or does that go to police inspectors so the ins or? The inspection, the, the um, inspectional services division, they um, are out and responding to, to complaints and issues. They have issued fines to businesses that have been non-compliant. Um, uh, and at this point they haven't, um, you know, moved forward in terms of bringing any business to the board or having to um, shut down any business um, based on COVID non-compliance, but they have issued fines related to, you know, um, 
establishments not adhering to the guidelines. And those can range per offense. So, you know, uh, it can be $500 or for um, if there was a case where there was multiple offenses where, you know, um, uh, related to COVID on top of any additional, you know, food, if it's a restaurant food, um, not adhering to the food code, then they could, they could do both food code and COVID um, standards that they could find them for. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our inspectors are out all, all, at all times, all hours of the day, um, following up on complaints and, and then um, we work with them informing them of positive cases and per the standards, restaurants, if they have a positive case, have to shut down for 24 hours. Retail establishments, if they have a positive case or are, are aware of a positive case, have to shut down for cleaning. So we have the inspectors go out um, to ensure that, that businesses um, are compliant with that. Yeah, this is more of a case where the, the business owner didn't agree, didn't think it was fair, um, had a protest and you know, kind of dug his heels in Next thing you know, you got 150 people out front protesting for him. You got police showing up. Um, so it turns yeah, that in that case, if, if somebody's not following the guidance, then then there is a, an opportunity to do cease and desist orders related as it relates to COVID, which is another uh, structure for for finding people. Well, uh, the whole goal here is educational and, and, and not to, to use force whenever we can, right? So if yeah, it, didn't, it didn't seem like the restrictions were doled out evenly because it was half, it was like dividing, you know, from one side of, of um, North Main Street to the other side of North Main Street kind of thing. A couple of blocks away, they were allowed to do it and he wasn't. So I guess there was a, a disagreement in the, the application of the restrictions. Well, mm -hmm. more than anything else. Okay. Did anything come in under citizens' input? No. Okay. We have to look at a date for the next meeting. Are we doing the first uh, Thursday still? Want to do that? Um, that would be fine. If, if Tess has any business for us on the first Thursday, usually with the holidays, things slow down in the office. Yeah, maybe actually if we could bump it out for January since, since um, a lot of folks are kind of off those two holiday weeks, mm -hmm. um, that that would only kind of give us the next two weeks to possibly get some more um, agenda items. Right. So maybe we could we could try even for for the 14th. That would be That's fine good. with me. Does that meet your schedule, doctor? Yeah, same time. See if that's convenient still? Yep. Okay, I will I will just confirm with Stephanie. Okay, 114, 2021 at uh, four o'clock. Do we need a motion for that? <laughs> I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, having, having, having no other business, I'll have to entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Oh, roll call. Roll call. <laughs> Tom Corey. Yes. Stephen Gagliardi. Yes. <laughs> Stephanie Perry. Okay, the Number meeting is four. adjourned. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon, and uh, everyone have a wonderful holiday. Too. See you later. Have Thank a good you, one. Tom. You as well. Thank you. Bye, everyone.